This is the Rivian R1S, the new Rivian SUV. Last year I reviewed the Rivian R1T, the Rivian pickup, and ever since then people have been eagerly awaiting the arrival of the SUV. Well, now it's here. It has 835 horsepower and a sticker price that starts around $85,000. And today I'm going to review the Rivian SUV and show you all of its quirks and features. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era with free listings. You can list your cool car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And we've had some fantastic sales recently, including this wonderful BMW M4 competition sold for $64,500. This Ford F-150 Lightning sold for over $101,000. And this fantastic BMW M5 brought over $41,000. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. With daily auctions and great selection and free listings, check it out at carsandbids.com. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the R1S with the key situation, which is pretty cool because this is your key fob. It looks neat, it's distinctive, and it's also a carabiner, as you can see, which works perfectly with the R1S's adventure lifestyle kind of motif. But that's not your only key because you can also set up your phone to be used as a key using the Rivian app. And then you can just walk up to the car, it senses you're there, it unlocks, and you don't even have to carry a key with you. Or you can go into the app and unlock the car remotely. And the cool thing is you can do this from anywhere. You can be in Europe, your car can be in America, and you can still unlock and lock the doors if you want to using the app, which is a pretty cool idea. And by the way, using the Rivian app as a key, there are some other kind of cool touches. Like for instance, you can find your car using Google Maps through the app. As you can see, it tells you exactly where it is, and then you can have directions to your car in case you lose it. You can also use the app to vent your windows. So on a hot day, you're sitting in your office, you're going to drive home in like 20 minutes, you can open your windows on the app and get some air flowing through the car so it's not as hot on the inside, which I've never seen before. Pretty cool feature from an app. But anyway, let's talk about getting into the Rivian. You unlock it and you can see that when you do that, the door handles pop out from the body. And from there, you can just reach inside and pull on them and get the door opened, which is pretty standard. Take another look. They're flush with the body. You unlock and then they're out and you can open the door. And when you do, you discover inside the door panel a flashlight. This little piece here is a hidden flashlight that you can take out and turn on and use just like a flashlight. And when you're done, you stick it right back inside the door. And that's not the only hidden portable thing in this car. You also have a speaker located at the bottom of the center console. Down here, this is a speaker. You can pull it out and then use it like a speaker. Set it up at your campsite, play music from Bluetooth, all that stuff. And when you're done, you stick it right back in the base of your center console and it charges. <laughs> So it's always charged and it's always there, a portable speaker built into your Rivian. But I don't want to go too far into the interior of the R1S just yet. In fact, I first want to cover the exterior. So I'm going to lock the doors. You can see the door handles fold back in and the car makes a little bird tweeting sound when you lock the doors. Very difficult to hear, but take a listen. Personally, I love this sound. As opposed to a loud, annoying horn honk, the bird tweeting sound is almost natural. You can't really tell it's there unless you're listening for it, and it's a pretty cool idea. But outside the R1S, we got to talk through styling because, frankly, I love how it looks. As a fan of boxy SUVs, I got my Land Rover Defender, my Mercedes G-Wagon, and my Toyota Land Cruiser. I love the boxy stuff, and automakers don't make vehicles like that anymore, but the R1S is that. It's boxy, it's squared off, it looks muscular and brutish, and it doesn't have that kind of boring, played-out, generic teardrop shape that so many other electric cars have. Here's a boxy, tough, tough, 
cool looking SUV and it's fantastic. It's also not that big. A lot of people think the R1S is absolutely massive because the R1T pickup truck is quite large, but the R1S is a lot smaller, 17 inches shorter than the R1T for a total length of around 200.8 inches. That makes this only about two inches longer than a Ford Explorer and just short of a BMW X7. So this is about in between sort of a midsize and a large SUV, and it's nowhere near the size of a Suburban or a Tahoe or other massive full-size SUVs, like you might think based on the size of the pickup. It's certainly smaller than that. And by the way, for the off-roaders among us, the smaller size compared to the truck means better angles. You get a shorter wheelbase, so there's a better breakover angle in the SUV, and a shorter rear overhang, so a better departure angle. The R1T pickup truck is tremendously capable off-road, and this should be even more. But anyway, next up, one key difference between the R1S SUV and the R1T pickup truck is, of course, a cargo area and passenger space instead of a pickup truck bed. So let's talk through that cargo area, starting with the tailgate itself. You can pop it open by pressing the tailgate button on the key fob and then it opens itself up automatically. Although you'll notice that even when it's open, you then have more tailgate. That's because this is a two-piece tailgate and you can open the lower part separately, which I love because it means you can sit on this lower tailgate and have a nice little picnic and use it as a bench. This is a fantastic feature. I have it in my Toyota Land Cruiser. I use it all the time and I love that Rivian has added it too. It's very cool. But let's talk through the cargo area. You open this up and the first thing you notice is seats back here, a third row of seats. In fact, that is standard on all R1S models. They all have three row seating. And you can see there's even some cargo space behind the third row, which is actually pretty good. Decent sized space back here. In case you're looking for even more space, you can lift up the cargo floor and see there's even more cargo storage underneath the floor for additional space if you want it. So pretty practical even with the third row in place. And there's a lot more to cover with this cargo area, some cool quirks and features back here. For one thing, over on the side, you slide this panel and it reveals a power outlet, both a household outlet and a cigarette lighter style outlet, which is very usable. Below that, you have another slidey panel. And if you slide that open, you have an air compressor. This allows you to blow up stuff, like for instance, a basketball or a bicycle tire or the tires to your Rivian. So if you go off-roading, you can air down using this air compressor to make it easier to crawl over rocks and then air back up, also using this built-in compressor, which is tremendously cool and really useful for off-roading. And of course, the air line that goes with the compressor comes with the R1S. It's included in this little zippered pouch. You open it up, plug it in there, and then you can start airing up and down using your compressor. Also cool back here, you have these little cargo tie-downs that slide forward and backward, so you can keep your cargo from sliding around, which is nice to have. Now, as for getting the seats down, a few ways to do this. The third row seat folds with these latches. Plastic latch here, you just pull it, push the seat down and it folds. You do that on both sides and then you have the third row down and extra cargo space. If you want to fold the second row seat, you have little buttons over on the side of the cargo area. You press that and then the seats automatically fold forward. As you can see, again, one on each side and then you have a massive cargo storage space back here where you can stick stuff. Now, one incredibly cool thing with all the seats folded down, you'll notice there's a little hump in the floor, which could be a little bit annoying, but this cargo floor panel can be removed and positioned perfectly to eliminate that hump and create a totally flat floor. Rivian says the thinking there is if you want to sleep inside your R1S, like when you're camping, well, now you have a totally flat floor to make it more comfortable to sleep on. And it gets even better because this R1S has something called camping mode, which will level the vehicle. It's accessed in the infotainment system and it uses the air suspension to perfectly level the vehicle even if you're parked on non-level ground. It'll raise up one wheel, lower another wheel, and make sure everything is exactly perfect so the interior is level, even if the suspension on the outside isn't, which also helps you camp on a flat surface. A very cool idea. Now, unfortunately, one big drawback to the cargo area and seat situation is it's rather difficult to get the seats back into place. The only way to get the third row back up is by using those same latches that you use to fold them down, which are now folded forward and very much out of reach for pretty much anybody. You have to either climb into the cargo area or go around to the back seats, the second row, and lift the third row up from there. It's not really incredibly practical. Same deal with the second row seats. You have to fold them manually from the second row 
in order to get them back into place. That's a little annoying, especially at this price point, $85,000, $90,000. Most other vehicles at this price point have power folding up and down seats. Not only does this not have power folding seats, it's actually quite difficult to get the third row back into place. Definitely a miss if you're folding and unfolding your seats off. But let's keep talking about seats because I suspect that's going to be a big reason why people buy the R1S, especially back seats, to use as a family SUV. So this second row, the rear seats, has got decent room. Not huge. I don't have a ton of room to spread out back here, but I do have good acceptable leg and knee room for a tall adult and great headroom in the back. So you do have space back here. You also have in the center back here a touchscreen, which controls a variety of different functions, specifically climate controls, temperature and where the air is coming out. You can also turn on your heated seats back here and even the dome light is controlled through this screen. Now, right below the screen, you can see two USB-C ports for charging, which is nice to have. And more USB-C ports located on the backs of the front seats. You can see here, USB-C and there's a clip. The thinking there is you can use it with some accessory to get an iPad clip to that so your children can watch in the back seat while the iPad is plugged into that USB-C port right behind it. Also in back, you can see you have cup holders. If you pull down the center armrest, there they are. So rear passengers have a place to put their drinks. But you might be wondering about third row access, especially given that miss in terms of third row folding and unfolding. Did they also screw up access to the third row? The answer is no, they did not. Access to the third row is really easy. You push a little button on the side of the second row seat. It folds forward and slides forward and creates a little path where you can get into the third row. Quite simple, just like pretty much every other SUV. And by the way, also worth pointing out that the second row seats are adjustable. You can slide them forward or backward to increase leg room or decrease leg room and increase third row leg room. And you can also adjust the backrest. This little lever on the side lets you change the angle of that. So you can adjust these seats for more comfortability. As for the third row, well, it's pretty small, which you'd probably expect given this is about the size of a larger midsize SUV. Not a huge third row, but it's there. Children will sit in it and they will be fine. Nothing especially exciting in the third row. You do have a couple climate vents back there, which is nice. You also have a couple cup holders back there, which is nice. Probably the main benefit is that it has its own dedicated sunroof, which is kind of cool, although it doesn't open. It's just a glass panel, but at least it's there. A lot of automakers don't bring their sunroofs to the third row, but they do in the Rivian. As for the rest of the roof, you have one giant glass panel over the front and second row seats. Massive panel, no crossbar in the middle, and you get a great view out into the world, although it doesn't open. It's just a big fixed panel and you can see through it, but you can't open it to get the wind in your hair. But anyway, next let's move up front where all the magic happens. I guess. <laughs> anyway, you get inside. One of the first things you discover sitting in the driver's seat, there is no start stop button, which is common on some EVs. You get in, it knows you're in the car, you put your foot on the brake and that wakes it up and then it's ready to go. And that's your start stop button. You don't have a traditional button. Now, one of the other things you notice when you first get in this car is the materials, which are, I would say nice, although not ultra high end luxury SUV level. It's nice in here. You got your stitched leather and some nice flat wood and it looks pretty good, but the materials definitely aren't on par with the top from Range Rover or other ultra high-end luxury SUVs. The very best Mercedes GLS models, they'll look a little bit nicer than the Rivian. This is a little bit more utilitarian, a little bit more functional rather than beautiful, and not quite on the level of some of those super luxury SUVs. And in fact, another thing you'll notice when you look around this interior is it's kind of minimalist. While some luxury SUV rivals have adornments and leather and all sorts of trim everywhere. This is kind of basic. Very few controls, switches, buttons. It's all pretty minimal in here. And it's more about screens. And the center screen is God. This center infotainment touchscreen does everything in this vehicle, including, for example, adjusting your mirrors. You want to adjust the mirrors? You go into this screen, find the adjust the mirrors spot, and then you can use the little controls on the steering wheel to adjust the mirrors. The left control will adjust the left mirror as you can see, and it corresponds exactly to what you want to happen. And the right control will adjust to the right mirror. And that's how you adjust your mirror. Same deal with the steering wheel. You adjust that through the screen, tap on the screen for adjust steering wheel. And then once again, you use those controls on the wheel to actually make the adjustment. You don't have dedicated controls outside the screen like in so many other cars. And in fact, this screen also integrates all climate control functions, including just moving the climate vents. Take a look at this. 
you go into the climate section and this is how you adjust the position of the vents. If you want it to be aimed more towards the driver, the passenger, you do all of that in the screen. You even turn on and off individual vents in here. You tap on it, it's off and then air is no longer blowing on you. Tap again and it's back on. You don't have little sliders or dials or switches on the vents themselves like you do in basically every other car. Now, one other cool thing in the climate control section of the Rivian infotainment screen, you have a pet mode. You can turn on pet mode and that will keep the car cool on the inside even after you've locked it and walked away. So if you wanna leave your dog inside the car while you go into a store, you can do that. The dog will stay cool even if you do your shopping, which is kind of neat. Now, it's worth pointing out, you do have a few climate control shortcuts on the main home screen, so you don't have to go into the climate tab for every little thing. You can change your climate temperature here, turn on your heated or cooled seats, and you have your front defogger and rear defroster all integrated here, one touch, so you don't have to go into a menu to find them. But beyond the climate controls and simple interior adjustments, this screen also does a lot of very cool and rather interesting things. For example, there is a car wash mode that you can activate by using the screen. And when you do that, it makes sure that the auto wipers don't go on if you go through a car wash and it locks up the charge port door. So if you spray that with a high pressure hose, it won't think someone's trying to open it and pop open. Your car wash mode makes sure you won't have any issues. There is also a show and tell mode, which is really cool. You can turn that on and it will keep the infotainment screen and all the exterior lighting on for 30 minutes. That way, if you want to demonstrate the Rivian to your friends or neighbors or whatever, you don't have to constantly keep coming back in, putting your phone on the brake to turn it on just to show people how it works. You can leave it in show and tell mode, which is great for someone, for example, filming YouTube videos demonstrating the car. Another thing you can turn on in the center screen is the gear guard system, which is effectively a security system to make sure that your Rivian stays safe. Specifically, it'll use all of the exterior cameras as security cameras. And when your car is locked and gear guard is activated, if someone comes up and bumps it or tries to break in, the gear guard will record that happening and then you can watch those clips and identify the perpetrator. You will notice the gear guard system is accompanied by this fuzzy little cartoon creature wearing a headband. <laughs> <laughs> that is intended to make the gear guard seem a little more fun since security and cameras seems a little surveillance-y. They wanted to make it more fun and lovable somehow. And so you have the little gear guard cartoon figure to do that. Next up, another thing you can configure in this all-knowing center screen is the drive mode that you're in. And you can see several different options. Regular, or they call it all-purpose, plus sport, conserve, off-road, towing, and there are more options when you go into these options. For instance, in off-road, there are several different off-road modes, including a drift mode for maximum fun off the pavement, and a new soft sand mode in case you take your Rivian off-roading on the sand that'll optimize your driving for that condition. You can also use this drive drive mode screen to raise or lower the suspension in the Rivian and changing the suspension heights is truly impressive in this vehicle. It goes from like eight inches of ground clearance in its lowest setting, seven, eight inches, something like that, to 15 inches of ground clearance in its highest, which is not only doubling the ground clearance, but it's giving you an enormous amount of clearance to go over rocks or any other obstacles you might encounter off road. It is quite impressive. And here's a very, very quick sped up video of the Rivian raising from its lowest setting to its very highest. Next up, another cool item in the R1S screen. I already showed you camping mode where it'll level the suspension to give you a flat sleeping place in here, but there's another cool camping item which is called Camp Courtesy. If you turn that on, the R1S will be more courteous to fellow campers. It'll make sure the lights don't turn on, the automatic locking doesn't turn on and off all the time, and it'll even turn down the climate control to be a little quieter. And that way, if you're sitting at a campsite, it won't disturb people around you, which is kind of a neat idea. But anyway, beyond on this center screen that can do pretty much everything. Other interesting quirks and features in this interior. One is the hazard lights, which are mounted on the ceiling using an actual physical button, one of the few in this car. That is a government mandate. You can't integrate the hazard lights into the screen. It has to be a button, and so there it is. Another physical control in here, as I showed you before, are the steering wheel controls. These aren't labeled because they do different things. You already saw that they can control your mirrors and your steering wheel positioning, but in their default setting, the controls over on the left change 
change your stereo. So the slider goes up and down for volume, and then left and right will adjust your stereo track or your radio station that you're listening to. If you hold down this left or right control, it also adjusts what you're seeing on the left part of the driver gauge screen in front of you. You can see it'll show like a trip odometer or your tire pressures or a map, and you can cycle through those items if you want. Over on the right side, this adjusts your adaptive cruise control situation in this car. So the little slider up down can change your following distance based on the car in front of you, and then left right will change your speed. A little tap increases or decreases by one mile an hour, or hold it down to increase or decrease by five miles an hour at a time. And by the way, the adaptive driver assist auto steering cruise control system here is fantastic. I don't know what Rivian calls it, Tesla calls it autopilot. Here, it works great. It keeps you in your lane, slows down, speeds up, comes to a stop, and it's just great, exactly how you'd want it to be. And the steering wheel is capacitive touch, meaning you can just rest your hand on the steering wheel and the car will basically drive for you. You don't have to like tap it or swing it or whatever to let it know that you're paying attention. The R1S will not do lane changes though. You put on your turn signal, you still have to change lanes yourself, but otherwise, if you're driving on the freeway in one lane, a great driver assist technology, really useful. Next up, another item worth pointing out in this interior, in the center console here, this is a wireless phone charger. It doesn't have all these warnings like some brands. It's just a simple pad, but you put your phone there and it charges. And the base of the pad, the little designs are tiny little Rivian logos, which is kind of a cool Easter egg. Another item worth pointing out, over on the left side of the steering wheel, you have a stock coming off, which is, well, actually it's a lot of stuff. For one thing, it's your turn signals, and it annoys me that when you put on the turn signal, the stock goes back to its central position. So you never really know if your signal is on or not, and then canceling it is harder. And I just wish if you push it down, it would stay down like every other car, but that's not how it works. This stock also integrates your rear wiper, your front wiper, your window washers, and your headlights. The wiper control is kind of interesting. You move this little switch, and then it shows you on the screen the different things that you can select in terms of wiper control. It's the same deal with headlights, which is also a little switch on this stock. You move that up or down, and once again, it comes on the screen to show you what position your headlights are actually in. Everything is integrated into that stock. Now, interestingly, in terms of storage in this interior, you do not have a glove box, which is unusual, doesn't exist, but you do have a large center console storage area. Pop open the armrest so you can see, pretty good space in here, and you have storage under the seats. Open this up and there's a little storage panel in there where you can stick stuff, and little door pocket storage area is kind of cool. Not only is it there, like in most cars, but you can pull it out if you want to access something more easily, and then it pops right back into its natural position. So decent storage in here, even without a glove box. But if it's more storage you're after, you can find it up front because the entire front end of the R1S is essentially a giant front trunk and you can access it in several different ways. There's a button on the center screen you can use to open the front trunk. You can use your key fob. There's a little rubber button here you can press and have it open or you can do it from your phone using the Rivian app. I tap open hood, uh, wait a second, and then it pops right open. That just did that for my phone which is pretty cool. Anyway, once it's open, you can see it is a pretty big cargo storage area in here, and actually it gets even bigger because you can fold the floor back and then fold it up and it magnetizes itself to the side of the storage area, and then you have even more storage in here where you can stick even more stuff. It's actually a pretty big, usable, practical front trunk and with so many ways to open, and it's not like you have to pull some latch like in some cars. It's easy. You just tap a button everywhere and it pops open and there's more storage. Now, if you want to close the front trunk, you can do it from all of those places I showed you before, including the phone. I will tap close hood, and then it comes right down. Again, just controlled that from my phone. And now let's talk about the front end, which is certainly unusual. The only part of the R1S design I don't like is the way it looks up front. You have this light bar going across with these two weird oval lights that frankly look like a Dyson fan. Now, the way these lights function is kind of unusual. The headlights are not actually the ovals, which is what I figured. Instead, the headlights are inside the ovals. That's them here. The ovals themselves have two purposes. Number one, they're the running lights. You're driving around, the ovals are lit up, and certainly a very distinctive look. Or you put on the turn signal, and then the oval lights up as the turn signal, and it has those two functions. You also have this light bar going across the front, like I said, also a distinctive look. And when you're charging, it lights up in green to let you know that the charging is
is connected and the Rivian is charging, which is kind of a cool look. The light bar has turned green and you're charging, which is neat. Now, speaking of charging, that's also done here in the front end. The little charge port door is integrated here next to the front fender. You really wouldn't notice it, but that's where it is. To open it, you have these three little lines on this plastic piece here, and that's where you tap. Press that, and then the charge port door opens up automatically, as you can see, and you can charge up your Rivian. When you're done, just press on those three lines again, the charge port door closes again, and then you're all set and ready to go. And by the way, speaking of the front of the R1S, it's worth pointing out that the R1S and the R1T are exactly identical in the front all the way up until the backs of the front doors. The two vehicles are unchanged, exactly the same, same truck and SUV, except for two very minor differences. One is this little silver strip at the top of the windshield and the top of the windows going around the entire vehicle. The truck doesn't have that, the SUV does. So if you're looking at it from the front, you see the silver strip, it's an SUV. Also, the SUV offers a different colored roof. You can see here it's black, even though this Rivian is red. Again, the truck doesn't offer that, only the SUV. So if you see a different colored roof from the body, then you know you're looking at the SUV. And next up, since I'm outside the Rivian, a couple more interesting things to cover. For one thing, roof racks, which are normally difficult to install, take on, take off in most cars, but here, incredibly easy. You can see right now the R1S doesn't have roof racks, but you can add them. They're right here, and all you gotta do is put them into the little roof rack receivers on the roof. They clip in, you go over to the other side, you do the same thing, and then you have one crossbar. And there are two other positions on the roof where you can mount another crossbar, either closer or further, depending on what you wanna carry on the roof. The cool thing here is installation is incredibly easy, and these are the very same crossbars I showed you go over the bed in the Rivian truck, the same one. So if you have an SUV and a truck, you can just share crossbars between them, kind of cool. Also worth pointing out, this R1S has all-terrain tires, as you can see, knobby tires designed to go off-road, but you don't have to get those. It's also offered with sort of a standard road tire and a sport performance tire. <laughs> Probably not too many vehicles offer with a performance tire and an all-terrain tire, but the R1S is. And since we're talking R1S offerings, let's talk generally about the R1S, starting with pricing. Like I mentioned earlier, starts around $85,000, but that number is for the Explore model, which isn't out yet. Right now, the only one you can order is the Adventure model, which actually starts around $91,000. It's a little bit more expensive. This pricing is not true, however, of the original R1S depositors. If you locked in your deposit months or years ago, your price was somewhere in the $70,000 range. They've jacked it up since then for people who are buying these now. But if you're an early depositor, you locked in a lower price, which is pretty cool. Now, all the pricing I'm discussing is for the quad motor model. That's this one, which literally has four motors, one at each wheel, makes an amazing 835 horsepower and 908 pound-feet of torque. Unbelievable numbers. But obviously having all that power jacks up the price a little bit. Rivian says a dual motor version will be coming out in the future with around 600 horsepower and presumably a lower entry price. But for now, you can only get the quad motor model with huge power. All-wheel drive is standard. Zero to 60 is 3.2 seconds. Unbelievable acceleration. And it can tow around 7,700 pounds, which means you can also pull stuff with it. And of course, the all-important range number, 316 miles of range, which is pretty good. Although you won't be getting that if you're constantly doing zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds. All right, driving the Rivian R1S. First things first, gotta floor it. <laughs> so fast. Faster than any vehicle has any right to be if it's this size. Amazingly quick. Floor it, floor it, floor it, floor it, floor it, floor it. Whoa, whoa. It is really, really quick. And the thing that I think is so impressive about this vehicle is it does everything. I remember when I started this channel and I would review like an X5M, I would talk about how amazing it was that it does everything. And now here I am reviewing this and it does everything even more than that. For example, this is unbelievably fast. It's zero to 60 in like 3.2 seconds, they say. I think that's like ultra supercar territory. I think that's like faster than a Ferrari Enzo or a Carrera GT. And I'm in a three row SUV and a three row electric SUV. I mean, five years ago, an electric car was some weeny little egg shaped hatchback. Now you got a three row SUV out racing a Ferrari Enzo. What is this world we're living in? Whoa. <laughs> 
And it gets even crazier than that. This is also an off-roading legend. I off-roaded with the truck, right? And I did this video where I climbed this crazy rock hill and everybody thought it was so insane and it did it and it was like, fine. This is even more capable off-road. It has even better angles, breakover and departure. It is just insane. So you're driving around in this vehicle that accelerates like a supercar, but it can off-road better than a Jeep. And you have three-row seating and you have all of the latest incredible modern tech. This is it. This is the combination of everything. This is the car that everybody wants um, because there's nothing you could want from a vehicle that this doesn't do. Now, that's not entirely true, and there are a couple things that the R1S can't do, but it's easier to talk about the stuff it can't do than the stuff it can. Can't do, number one, handling. It's fine, but it's not like amazing. Um, the X5M is a better handler, steering is better, etc. This is a heavy car, it's a big car, and you can feel that, and that is a difference between this and like a true performance SUV that's a little bit more fun on the pavement. The other big thing that this can't do, ultimately, it's not like a super high-end luxury vehicle. I recently drove the Mercedes-Benz EQS, that's a fantastic luxury car that's also an electric car. This is not on that level. It just doesn't have the level of luxury. The, the ride comfort, the seating comfort, the materials quality, you're just not quite there. Now, I want to point out, this isn't priced like that either. Either It's amazing to think that a $91,000 plus SUV is not in the ultra luxury tier, but it just isn't anymore. New Range Rovers are in the $150,000 to $200,000 range for the nice ones. This just isn't that level, and so it doesn't need to be that level of interior, but crucially, it isn't. This is not an ultra luxury SUV inside. Other than that, this can do it all. It can transport your whole family. It can out-accelerate supercars. It has amazing technology. Um, great driver assist features uh, to drive on the freeway, steering, all that stuff it does for you. It's incredibly good at that. Um, Off-roading, and obviously it's efficient. That's another big difference between this and the X5M. That's a big V8, probably gets 12 miles per gallon if you want to floor it. This is an efficient vehicle because it's electric. It's not the most efficient electric car, but it's far more efficient than any gas car. And it's amazing. It's amazing it can do it all. And I loved the truck, but this has broader appeal. And I talked to the people at Rivian about that. Hey, which is more popular? And they said the SUV by far. Everybody wants the SUV. Everybody's waiting for the SUV. And now here it is. And you have three. You have all the great benefits of an electric car and a sports car and an off-roader and a high-tech vehicle and a family SUV all in one. And it's just hard to complaint. Now, a couple of other things I want to put out about the driving experience. Number one, the ride is a little rougher than I expected. Um, I felt that way about the truck too. It's, it's, it feels like it's tuned a little bit more for sport than for comfort. And you feel that even in day-to-day -day driving, going over speed bumps, et cetera, it feels a little rougher than you would maybe want for an SUV at this, at this price point. I wouldn't call that a deal breaker, but it's a reality. I'm also a little disappointed in the camera system in this car. The reversing camera quality is not very good. And also there's no blind spot camera. There's no lane change camera like the there is in some modern luxury vehicles. You don't have a camera for the mirror. Um, I think they could do a little bit better in terms of camera technology in, in the R1S. Uh, but I mean, these are little gripes and I have a lot of little gripes about a lot of cars and fewer about this one. It's amazing all the stuff it can do in one. And so that's the Rivian R1S SUV. This vehicle is very impressive and it could be great if you're looking for an all electric family SUV or an off-roader SUV or a sports car SUV or a high tech SUV or some combination of all of the above. The R1S can do it all and it's priced like it too. Anyway, now it's time to give the Rivian R1S a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 74 out of 100, which means the Rivian R1S is now the new Doug score champion, tying the McLaren F1 for the all-time greatest Doug score ever. And how could it not? It's faster in a straight line than a supercar, but it has the seating capacity and cargo area of a Chevy Tahoe. It has cutting edge technology that rivals the best from Mercedes-Benz and Tesla, but it'll go further off the pavement than a Bronco or a Jeep. I've never seen a vehicle that's so capable of doing so many things at once. This is is quite simply the best all-around car I've ever tested.